We are diving into the atmosphere of America in 1962, the height of the Cold War and the so-called Cuban Missile Crisis. In one of the expensive mansions in Los Angeles, a gorgeous party is taking place. Despite the massive panic, the owner of the house, a wealthy scientist inventor named Calvin Weber, is surprisingly calm and in a great mood. His pregnant wife, who is also a housewife named Helen, maintains a supportive atmosphere by trying to please the guests in every possible way. They are suddenly interrupted by an urgent message from Kennedy about the worrying situation in Cuba and that the Soviet missiles deployed on it could strike anywhere in the United States. The guests leave in a hurry and Calvin leads his wife to his super-secret bomb shelter. During this time, the American fighter jet fails and crashes. The pilot is ejected and the plane crashes straight onto the Weber mansion, destroying it to the ground. Hearing a powerful explosion above and checking the off-scale temperature sensors on the surface, Calvin realizes that a nuclear war has already begun and immediately blocks the entrance to his safe haven. The security system is configured in such a way that it is blocked for as much as 35 years. After all, this is how long the nuclear half-life lasts. On the surface, a rescue group is already working with might and main and only states the fact that the owners probably died along with their house. And in the Weber's hideout, everything is thought out to the smallest detail. There are many rooms with a ventilation system and the amount of food and essentials is designed for all 35 years. Suddenly, Helen begins to have contractions and she safely gives birth to a son, whom due to circumstances they decide to call Adam. A year later when little Adam begins to walk, a diner is already under construction on the surface. The excavator suddenly bumps into something metallic and the builders decide that it is just a sump. They prefer not to touch it and just put the foundation on top. After a few more years, Adam learns to read and starts asking awkward questions. Calvin replies that the moment will come when they will get out and start a new life. Adam will find a girlfriend and everything will be fine. The father tries not to waste time and in addition to science, tries to teach his son everything necessary, for example, the basics of self-defense. Mother teaches Adam to dance with might and main, as she loves this activity very much. In the meantime, decades have passed on the surface and following the fashion, a traditional diner of the 60s turns into a bar for hippies of the 70s. Calvin continues to teach Adam Latin, French and other sciences. He also shows his son paper shares of various promising companies that he and his mother had long ago acquired especially for him. According to him, it was possible to make good money on them earlier on but now it is unfortunately rubbish. Also, the father gives his son his favorite collection of rare baseball cards, but Adam does not understand what baseball is. Calvin tries to explain to him, but he is not very good at it. Upstairs, the year of 1991 has already come and the hippie bar has become a full-fledged harsh pub for rockers. In 1995 mom brings a cake and together with her husband congratulates her substantially matured son on his birthday. His mother gives him a ridiculous blue jacket, sewn with his own hands and his father gives him strange handmade roller skates. Adam makes a wish to meet a lovely girl, but his father worries that she might glow from radiation. Finally, 35 years pass and the system is automatically unlocked. Everyone is impatient, but Calvin does not want to endanger his family members and decides to check everything himself. In the meantime, the upstairs pub is finally turned into a viper for alcoholics and homeless people. And at the very moment when the bartender and his only drinking companion are talking about the fact that there is no God and the whole world sucks, the hatch suddenly opens and a magical light bursts into the dark room. Like a representative of an extraterrestrial civilization, a humanoid creature in a mask and a yellow protective suit appears from under the earth. The drinking companion instantly escapes and the bartender loses consciousness. Calvin tells the bartender not to touch his lift and leaves. Out on the street, Calvin is shocked by the strange buildings on his former site, the disgusting loud music from the gateway and the homeless people rummaging through the trash cans. On the street he bumps into a transvestite wondering about his gender. But he says that for some 200 bucks he can be for him a girl or a boy. Immediately, some gangsters begin to threaten Calvin with a pistol and he accidentally runs into an adult store. Calvin returns to the shelter. He tells his wife and son scary stories that radiation gave rise to different subspecies of mutants. Some eat from garbage cans, threaten with weapons and some have generally become hermaphrodites who trade in their bodies. Calvin offers to continue to stay in the shelter, but Helen is adamantly opposed. They conflict and the father has a heart attack. But since the family's supplies are already running low, Adam decides to independently go upstairs for shopping. Father asks him not to enter adult stores, because they spray an invisible deadly gas in there. And if he decides to bring a beautiful girl with him back, then the main thing is that she's not a mutant. The mother adds that it is also desirable that this girl is from Pasadena, because the girls there are prettier. Packing his things in a bag and dressed in his creepy blue jacket Adam goes upstairs where the bartender has already built a prayer altar. Seeing the divine light again, the bartender calls him the Lord, who yesterday appeared to him in yellow, but Adam says that it was his father, and he is just a son. Immediately, the bartender begins to pray to the Son of God and ask for forgiveness for sins. Out on the street, dumbfounded Adam rejoices in every little thing. He naively admires the sky, other people, 
especially some hurrying woman. Screaming poison gas he runs away at the sight of an adult store. In the supermarket Adam is offered to deliver the order to his home, but then he realizes that he does not even remember his address and runs in panic to look for the place where he came from. While looking for a house he spots a shop with a sign for buying baseball cards and decides to stop by. The seller intends to trick Adam by offering only $500 for the entire collection. But a store worker named Eva intervenes in the conversation and prevents her boss from deceiving the guy. The angry shopkeeper fires Eve, but she doesn't mind. After that, Adam and Eve get to know each other. He says that he got lost and asks for a ride to the hotel. Not trusting Adam, the girl tries to get rid of him, but he offers one rare card worth $4,000 for her service. Eve naturally agrees, drives Adam to the hotel, picks up her card and leaves immediately. Having settled in the room Adam is sincerely surprised by the modern telephone, color TV with fashionable advertisements and especially the frightening view from the 18th floor. Suddenly Eve calls him and asks to meet in the hall. During their time spent together, she returns the card to him, because it is too valuable and she cannot take it. Adam admits that he really likes Eve, but the girl tries to turn him off referring to the fact that she only comes across assholes. She said that she needs to go and urgently look for a new job. Adam immediately offers to work for him and sell baseball cards as well as help load a couple of trucks of provisions. Eve happily agrees for $1,000 a week. Having rented a truck and sorted out all the cases, Adam asks Eve for one more favor, to help him find a suitable wife. The main thing is that she is not a mutant and preferably from Pasadena. After that they come to Eve's home where they find her ex-boyfriend Cliff, who is just packing up his things in a bag. Eve takes the house keys from him and drives him away. Also, there is a gay roommate named Troy who lives with Eve. He works as a web designer and even has his own computer. Meanwhile in the shelter while Calvin sleeps, a drunk Helen decides to go upstairs, where the bartender has already managed to organize a whole sect. When asked who she is Helen replies that she is just a mother. Everyone falls to their knees, repeating the words this is mother. Terrified, Helen drops her martini glass and descends back to the hideout. At this moment Adam, Eve and Troy are having a good time. Once at a baseball match Adam happily exclaims that he finally understands the rules of this game. You just had to see it with your own eyes. Further along, in order to find a girlfriend for Adam they visit a nightclub. While meeting a Canadian named Sophie, Adam demonstrates his excellent French, which greatly surprises those around him. Adam's charm takes over and Eve becomes jealous of him. Instead of helping Adam find his soul mate, she does her best to prevent him. She repels him from the invasion of women and as soon as they are alone, her ex-boyfriend Cliff appears and takes him somewhere. Adam tries to stop Cliff, but he tries to get into a fight with him. Showing his superiority Adam forces Cliff to leave, but Eve takes offense at him and also leaves. When Troy returns home Eve jealous interrogates him about who Adam left the party with, and upon learning that he left with Sophie he simply loses his temper with rage. In the middle of the night Eve intends to go in search of Adam, but he suddenly appears at her doorstep, stating that they had nothing with Sophie. Here they kiss for the first time and Eve decides to ask if Adam knows what sex is at all. He says no. The girl cannot believe it and Adam finally tells her that since 1962, when the nuclear war began he was with his parents in an underground bomb shelter, where he was actually born and raised. Hearing this Eve becomes very upset, as she realizes that she has contacted an outright nutcase. She calls him a taxi and asks him to leave. Adam himself decides to gain at least some sexual experience and still dares to visit an adult store. After all that he decides to visit Eve again, but social workers are waiting for him there, intending to take him to a special hospital. Eve asks Adam to go with them, but Troy condemns her for this betrayal. Eve makes excuses that Adam's behavior began to scare her, because he wanted to drag her to some kind of dugout, just like that maniac from Silence of the Lambs. On the street, Adam hands Eve the keys to his hotel room, where all of his baseball cards are kept. He allows her to take them for herself and just let him pay for his number. After these words he suddenly runs away, jumps into the truck and drives away, simultaneously smashing the social workers' cars. Finally, Adam finds his refuge and the bartender, who proclaimed himself Archbishop and all his flock help unload their provisions. Meanwhile, Eve and Troy visit Adam's hotel room, where they find not only a collection of his baseball cards, but also old shares of IBM, Polaroid and other companies, which are now worth a fortune. Troy politely explains to Eve that a man has finally appeared in her life who is not just kind, polite and well-mannered, but also handsome and very rich, and she just took him and handed him over to a psychiatric hospital. Eve and Troy throw all their strength in search of Adam, but to no avail. Suddenly, while rolling through Los Angeles at night Eva accidentally notices him wandering alone down the street. They hug and kiss happily. Then Adam brings the girl to the shelter where he introduces her to her father and mother, introducing her as Eva Rostakova. In addition, he asks his parents to close the place for another two months, because there will definitely be enough food for them. In the meantime, he will finish all his things and then he will definitely come back for them. In parting, Mother teaches Eve how to cook Adam's favorite dish and Eve says she is from Pasadena. The father in turn nevertheless decides to tell his son where the children come from. 
Having unlimited financial opportunities Adam and Eve buy a picturesque piece of land, where they quickly erect an exact replica of the parental home of the 60s to help them adapt to the world more easily after starting to go out together. Seeing such a surprise parents are speechless. Although Calvin notes that the bunker was not bad at all. While the women swarm in the kitchen, Adam and his father talk on the summer terrace. Calvin asks if Rostikov's surname is Russian, but Adam tells him to relax because she is Ukrainian. There was no nuclear war, just a fighter plane accidentally fell on their house and the Soviet Union collapsed altogether without a single rocket. Having hardly digested this information, the father asks Adam not to tell his mother about all this.